Good morning, everyone. My name is Natasha. I am a Stevens Village um, tribal member and tribal judge. I grew up here in Fairbanks. My parents are Carm and Renee Singh, and my grandmother is Valerie Matthew. My grandfather is the late Stephen Matthew. I'm very pleased to be here today. I just finished writing my, what I, my speech about 10 minutes ago before I walked in. Um, because I was very busy this morning talking to the plaintiffs, plaintiffs of the Akia Chak litigation. So I have a little update. We've been going back and forth, um, talking throughout the state, and the governor was in Akia Chak yesterday. He is in Chalkitsik today, and he goes to Barrow tomorrow. And from what I understand, the governor is asking the plaintiffs for another six month extension on the litigation. So as you all know, he received a six month extension in December and then another 30 days. So in total, he wants a 13th month extension. Um, it's interesting that the governor also did not allow the plaintiff's attorneys to be present at these meetings, even though he himself is an attorney. But I just wanted to give you all that update as you all are interested because we know that the possibility of Indian country could improve the issues that we're talking about at this conference, public safety, child protection, and protection of our tri tribal members. So that's what I was doing this morning when I was supposed to be preparing my remarks on the proposed ICWA regulations. Now, how many of you are familiar with the ICWA statute, the Indian Child Welfare Act statute? Right, so in 1978, after more than four years of hearings, testimony, and debate, Congress passed ICWA in response to the alarmingly high percentage of Indian families broken up by removal, often unwarranted at the time, of their children by non-tribal public and private agencies. Prior to the enactment of ICWA, state government agencies followed a pattern and practice of removing between 25 and 35 percent of all Indian children across the nation from their families. And these children were placed, 90% of them were placed in non-Indian homes. So Congress passed ICWA to address this issue. And it was absolutely necessary. It was a bipartisan statute supported on all sides. And at the time, of course, you know how Congress works. Someone, some staffer in the office prepares a bill and then eventually by the time it makes it into law, it's pretty chopped up and often sometimes doesn't make sense. It's unclear. And so when you go to implement it, um, our state OCS agencies, our state courts, our tribes, it's kind of hard to look at the law and really understand what the heck it means. So how many of you have looked at the Indian Child Welfare Act, read it, and you're like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do or what the tribal rights are, what the Indian custodian rights are, what the parental rights are. How many of you have done that? I know I have, and I'm supposed to be legally trained. So often what we did was look in the BIA guidelines, right? The guidelines, I always use this book to help me. And you go into the guidelines, and they provide some clarity. But the guidelines are only guidance for everyone, including state courts and state OCS agencies. So now um, the BIA identified that, hey, after 40 years, the state courts and across 50 states have really been impl implementing ICWA differently. And we can't go on like this any further. So they proposed in March um, mandated regulations that the state courts and agencies would actually have, have to, it wasn't guidance, they have to do what's in these regulations. So the tribes reviewed the comments 
and BIA received over 2,000 comments on these proposed regs. And I was really encouraged by the comment of, by the proposed regulations because it had a lot of clarifying um, direction, directives to our state courts and our OCS agencies. Um, specifically, I am encouraged by the, the direction state courts are given in regards to the notice provisions, which require the agency and courts to send notice to a tribe when they have reason to believe a child is native. The regulations also clarify that transfer to tribal courts may occur at any stage of the proceeding and clarifies what constitutes good cause not to transfer. Section 23.2 of the proposed regulations clarifies active efforts. We all have been through ICWA proceedings where you just don't even know where active efforts begin and end, and it seems like the OCS worker doesn't know either. So this is particularly um, great for our Native children, especially because, as you are aware, OCS argued in Tanunic that it had no duty to provide support to possible ICWA placements and admitted to making no effort to contact two proposed Native placements. So the proposed BIA regulations would address these issues. So first, I would like to thank Assistant Secretary Kevin Washburn and Deputy Assistant Secretary Larry Roberts. As from what I understand, they were the driving forces behind the effort to create these binding regulations. I'm not sure if Larry Roberts is in the room today, but he will be here tomorrow, I believe. And please, everyone remember to thank him for these regulations, proposed regulations. Next, you should also be aware that there is an attack, of course, on the proposed regulations. A number of private adoption agencies have filed suit claiming the regulations violate federal law and the U.S. Constitution. It is important that tribes and Alaska Natives and others educate state officials about the need for the regulations. Specifically contact the governor's office to ensure that the state of Alaska does not join anti-ICWA positions in litigation. You can find the proposed regulations on the BIA website or actually on the TCC website for this tribal court conference they're posted. There's a few comments um, on the proposed regulation also posted that if you don't want to read through the regulations, um, the comments are kind of an easy read to figure out what's included there. We we expect to see the regulations promulgated in a few months and I really look forward to all of us having access, including OCS, including the state courts, tribal advocates and parents having access to these mandated regulations. Um, if you would like to get involved with the campaign to ensure that these regulations stick, please contact the NARF office in Anchorage. Thank you.